Hello again everyone and welcome back again for another video. What we're going to do today is not a computer build but a computer upgrade. What I have here is a brand new Dell Inspiron 3891. Uh, I'm starting out on the back of this so we can take a look at the uh, back panel here. Uh, as you can see this is all kind of integrated in here so we really can't do a board swap on this one. Uh, I have the capacity of thumb screws taken off or loosened up so let's pop this off here. Let me set this down here real quick. And uh, let, me, let me show you this here first before we go. We've got four PCI slots here. Here's where our power goes. Um, a vent in the back there. Uh, let's take it and flip it around this way. Have a look on the inside of this. All right, so we've got one memory stick in there, but we have two slots so we can upgrade the memory. Looks like there's two SATA ports here, and they're both plugged in. I don't know if this is an extra. It probably is to add a secondary drive in there. Um, looking down in here, we can see that we got a little 2242 uh, M.2 going on there for our storage. This is a 256 gig uh, and we've got two slots here that we can use to fill in with other stuff. Put our graphics card there if we want. Let's take off this. Hopefully I get this off right without breaking anything. There we go. Take off that little shroud there. There's our fan that is cooling this down. Uh, looks like this is actually blowing on there, so... Um, I know it's sucking. I'm sorry. It's sucking. That's what I meant to say. It's sucking all the heat off of there and uh, exhausting it out there. I uh, don't really like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that around and uh, we'll put a, uh, we'll, we'll flip that fan around and it looks like we need a fan right here. Now, I don't know what size that is. Let me back it up here get out the ruler <coughs> let's measure from here to here uh looks like it's going to be an 80 millimeter that we can stick in there boy do i have an 80 millimeter <laughs> i don't know i know i got a whole bunch of 92s and some 120s and 140s i'll have to see if i have an 80 millimeter on there uh, we can put another fan in there. Now, the power for it right here, as you can see, is a proprietary one. So, yep, definitely got to use a Dell power supply for that. Looking up here, uh, if you look towards the back there, you can see how the motherboard kind of goes outward right in here. So, if I wanted to... Uh, do a swap in this board it's it's i wouldn't say impossible but it would be very very difficult to do especially when you got the front ports right there um so i'm not gonna do a swap obviously on this thing but uh i can do some upgrading here um let's see i'll throw another stick of ram in there throw a video card in there and uh, change out this little itty bitty little thing for a higher capacity uh, NVMe slot 2280 type M.2. All right, so let me check out everything else here. I'm trying to figure out what some of this stuff is. Like right up here, hold on here, let me adjust my this thing. I don't know what that is. I don't see any documentation on that. Maybe it's another bracket or something to install something on. I'm going to have to play around with this, see if I can figure out what that is. Um, I'd kind of like to do a... Uh, gosh, and you really can't. Just because... Let me, let me take this side off here. I bet this comes off like this. Most of these Dells do. Yeah, I can take this off, but there's no intake up front here. Looks like there's some things on here. Shows you where to mount the uh, 2.5 HDD, ODD, 3.5 inch HDD fan duct. Hmm. Yeah. There's there's some little bit, a bit of vent right here to let some air in this way on the front. But I don't see any um, mounts 
for a fan. What's this right here? I suppose that would probably be for the uh, for the drive. I'll bet you. I wouldn't think that would be like 80 millimeter across. Let's see. Let's do some measuring here. 80 millimeter there. Oops. And 70. So yeah, that would probably be for an SSD. I don't know why it's like this. You'd think you could punch that out, but you can't. Uh, they don't give you any other uh, mounting bracket or nothing to put those in. Let's see if I have a... Oh, here's one. See how this is going to go here. Obviously, that's going to go there. Will this mount here this way? I'm not going to put an extra drive in here, but I wanted to see kind of where we stand here with this. No, nothing this way. Huh. I'm going to have to play around with this. I'm not going <clears> to... <throat> I don't think I'm going to put another drive in here. Um... But, yeah, I am going to do some upgrading on this. All right, let me cut this scene here, and uh, let me work on this. Alrighty, so I've installed the new memory module, and I've also installed the new video card. we got the GT1030 going on here, and <clears throat> if we look right here under the task manager, you can see that we now have 16 gigs of RAM. This came stock with 8. What I'm checking now is temperatures excuse me sneezes uh temperatures on this at idle and we're going to run some cinebench here real fast to see what we're running on cinebench now you can see our idle temp here is sitting at about 39 degrees celsius uh minimum is what we reached uh now we're going to go ahead and open up cinebench here <sighs> And we're going to stress out the uh, multi-core a little bit here and see what our temperatures rise up to. And let me go ahead and stop this. I'm going to let Cinebench run for its 10-minute uh, lap time. And we'll see what our max high was on that. And then we will come back. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting down to the last minute here on the uh, Cinebench test. It's been running for almost 10 minutes now. And you can see looking at our max up here, we reached 86C on the uh, CPU package total. Um, not too impressed with that. That's almost borderline going to uh, the uh, where it starts to uh, throttle. And I believe it's either 90, 92 is where we'll see the CPU throttle. I don't know. I'm not really going to test that and really stress it. But, yeah, I'm not too happy with this. Now, um, I looked on my shelf to see what I had for 80 millimeter fans. And it turns out I didn't have any 80 millimeter fans. Well, I did. I had one. Um, kind of an older fan. Kind of loud. I don't want to use that one. This is a new system. Um, this is actually going to go up for sale. Uh, it definitely needs some cooling done to it. I can actually feel this right here. Uh, you can't see it on camera, but I can actually feel the case, and the case itself feels warm. The back part there, where you can put another fan, it feels warm, and the side uh, and up on top here feels warm. So this is a pretty warm case all around. Uh, I'm not too happy with that either. Um, shouldn't be like that, Dell. What the hell? So, anyways, uh, like I said, I didn't have any 80 millimeters, so I'm going to have to buy some. Let's see what we finished up with our score here. Uh, come on, give us our score. Not going to give us the score. Looks like it's somewhere from 6,000 something down below uh, and above 49. <laughs> Let me switch my keyboard over see if it'll show us what we're reading here. 5468 is what I'm showing right there. All right, let me switch my keyboard back. Anyway, so as uh, as I was saying, um, I don't have any 80 millimeter fans, so I had to order some. And let me switch here. So this is what I ordered. Um, I've used these in a couple other Dells. This is some Noctua NFR8 Redo 1800 RPM uh, PWM fans. Uh, pretty nice fans. They're nice and quiet. They're cheap, you know, 995. I ordered two of them. Uh, looks like we got a spot for two of them. I didn't see anywhere we could put three. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like to have an intake and exhaust 
uh, going on here, but it doesn't look like that's the way it's going to be. So we're going to have to go with uh, just two of them, I suppose. So um, it's going to be a couple days before they get here. I think it said it's going to be here like Monday or something like that. So I'm going to hold off on the rest of my filming here. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and change out that 256 uh, 2242 um, M.2, and I'm going to put a 512 in here, uh, 2280. So let me cut this scene, and I'll come back when I got that done, and then we'll retake this test, and then uh, we'll even run a uh, heaven benchmark on this too, and see what this scores in heaven with that GT 1030. And I'll see you here in just a sec. Alrighty, let me switch the KVM over here to the other computer, I think, just a second. There we go. And uh, as we can see in the HW monitor, uh, the differences that it's made with the new fans in there, the new Noctua fans, are low. Look at this, 23, 24 degrees Celsius on the idle. Uh, that's really nice looking right now a lot better than what it was uh let's see what was our peak was it 84 86 or something like that on cinebench with the uh cpu stressing something like that um but we'll, we'll see how it fares this time around let's go ahead and start the same cinebench test again uh let's see what we're climbing up to here Give it one minute first, and then I'll cut the scene and let it go for the whole ten minutes. We'll see what we're climbing up to. I mean, already you can see we're a lot cooler than what we were before. Fifty-six C. Hmm. Fifty-seven. Okay. All right. So right now you can see we have an improvement going on here. Tell you what, I'm going to let Cinebench run for 10 minutes here. Let me switch my keyboard over back over here. Uh, then uh, we'll come back and we'll see what the max temperature was on this after running the uh, stress test for 10 minutes. See you in a sec. Okay, so we are reaching our last minute in Cinebench. Let me switch the uh, keyboard over again. You can see... I, I checked the last uh, video there to see what our peak was. Our peak was 86 degrees Celsius. Um, you can see right here that we're actually at 77 degrees Celsius uh, peak. Uh, 73 on another core, 75 another. So about, you know, 76 average. But what's important to note is right over here, the current value... Um, you can see like right here on this one on core 2... It's dipped down to like 69 a couple times there. I, I even seen it hit 68 at one point. So we know that uh, it's actually keeping it a lot, lot cooler than what it was with that stock fan. Look at that. See that dip down to 63 there? Um, so yeah, this is actually pretty interesting here. We'll see what our final score is going to be. Uh, it's going to do one more round, I imagine. Let's see how far it's got to go. Yeah. We'll let that do that, and uh, we'll see what it's scored so far. Let me scroll down here. 56.35 was what it ran uh, the last time I tested. Uh, nose itches, sorry. Um, looks like it's running about the same. 54.08, actually a little bit lower, but still, um, our temperatures are a lot cooler. Let me call up Task Manager here, take a look at our CPU. There we go, 4.18, uh, totally turboed all the way up there. I think 4.2 or whatever is the peak on this. Let me scoot this over here, kind of rearrange this a little bit. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there it is, down at 69 again. Yeah, this this definitely made a huge impact on here, and I'm absolutely happy with this. Now, I did try this earlier with a uh, filter on the back as well. This is a Silverstone 
filter, 80 millimeter filter on here, and that actually kind of rose it up a little bit. So this filter does affect the cooling, but um, since we are running both fans that are on here basically as an intake, you know, the intake is actually coming from the back and then going down that like uh, canal thing there that's on it, and then hitting the uh, CPU cooler, which has also got the fan as uh, intake that's blowing air down on it. Um, I thought, man, I better put some filtering on this because that's just going to be like a dust magnet, you know, kind of like sucking in dust all the time. So I will put this on her, even though it does make the temperature rise a little bit. Uh, it's still lower in value than what it was stock. So I'm absolutely happy with that. Um, this thing should be finishing up here pretty dang quick, I would imagine. Let's see, where do we got to go? Yep, just about done here. And then we'll get our final score. Uh, yep, 54.43. A little bit lower this time. You know, that's, that's Cinebench for you. Sometimes it, it always varies like that, but still, yeah. All right, there's the results. Let me go ahead and uh, pop this open and show you what the upgrade looks like now that we're done. And uh, this video is going to be finished here. Let me close this up. This up. This up. And, uh, whoops, let me switch my keyboard over here. Stop recording, and we'll go to the next scene. Okay, to give you a quick rundown now of all the stuff I did so this so far, well, I guess I'm done with it. I put two new Noctua fans in here, one right here and one on the CPU cooler. Both of them are set to intake. Uh, if we look on the back here, you can see the filter that I put in here. This is a Silverstone 80 millimeter filter. Uh, keep it nice and clean and uh, it'll collect most of the dust right here instead of on the uh, CPU cooler. <sighs> okay, looking inside here on this side, right here we put another memory stick for a total of 16 gigs of RAM. It originally came with 8. I also upgraded the hard drive. Well, I didn't have a hard drive. I installed a hard drive in here. This is a Western Digital 1 terabyte black. Um... And then the M.2, I did change uh, initially to a 512, but I was having some issues with it. It would uh, disappear. It'd say no boot device found and like that on there. I don't know if it was the brand. It was a Clev. Um, you know, it was just a cheapie that I was sent for free. It might have just been a bad drive. It was the first time I tested it out. It might be an issue with the motherboard not accepting that uh, type of M.2. Who knows? Um, I'm going to guess it's probably the cheaper M.2, not the board itself. Dell's usually pretty decent. <clears throat> and then down below here, we, of course, have the video card upgrade to a GT1030 passively cooled. So there's no fan in here, so I didn't need to plug anything in here. Now, one thing I did notice that on Dell's website, it said that you can put a GTX 1660 in here. Um, I suppose that would work. Uh, the, the issue I have with that is there is no um, extra power connectors. You would have to get like a SATA to PCIe uh, power adapter or some sorts here. And I don't know that this power supply would carry that much. I don't know how many watts this is. I can't really see anywhere on there. Not sure, but uh, I wouldn't think it would be too many. Probably like maybe 250 or so, I, I would guess. Somewhere about there. That's usually what uh, Dell will cheap out and give you when it comes to power supplies. But anyways, our fans that I installed on here are actually on a PWM splitter. So they are still be, being controlled by PWM. It's just you have uh, more air coming in here and uh, cooling off that CPU. And you just seen the results there that I showed pretty decent improvement there now this filter will raise the temperature a little bit but even for what the filter raises it to is still a better reading than what i was getting with the stock setup with that air uh being sucked out this way and blown out so that's going to be a wrap for this uh dell inspiron 3891 guys uh hope you enjoyed i will see you in the next video i'll have that coming out uh, well whenever i get my ass around to filming it uh, we're going to be doing another computer. I haven't decided which one we're going to do, which case yet. Um, but I, I guess we'll see. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll have something coming up 
later on. But I will see you guys later. Y'all have a great day and bye-bye.